Hundreds more were travelling by road on the Viva Palestina convoy, led by George Galloway MP. As she arrived in Cairo airport, I was convinced that this time she would get to Gaza. However, once again, there were those who were prepared to go to any lengths to stop her. And in the face of some brutal force by the Egyptian police, she showed her mettle. She, she was, uh, maybe not in the center where it was really tough, I mean, it was really tough yesterday, but she was there, she was around, she was, uh, and the Egyptian police treated her like everybody, yeah, I mean, they didn't make a distinction. We thought they will treat the, the women uh, more friendly than, uh, than, than, than the men or the old, uh, but uh, nothing, they, they didn't uh, distinguish between, uh, she, she was just treated like everybody. For the next few weeks, she joined in the protests organized by the Gaza Freedom Marchers and Code Pink. And when it seemed that the Cairo authorities had relented, Hedy's bags were packed for Gaza once again. So, we keep on making pressure. But it turned out only two buses would leave the Egyptian capital for the Rafa border and Gaza. These buses should not go, but if anyone wants to go, we're not going to stop them. However, I was going to go. I wanted to go. I always wanted to go. I want to see how it's like. I wanted to report back. But the steering committee in Gaza told us not to come. Nobody and wants happened, to go like, on this bus. Okay. No. What happened? Nobody. Wow. As many people as you can put on this bus, bring them. This is 1,400 people that came here for the Palestinian struggle. Do you understand? Where are the rest of the buses? Yeah. 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 Our demand is what we've wanted. 1360 going in and, you know, lifting the siege. Emotions were running very high. And in the midst of all the anger, Hedy made a decision which shocked everyone present. I have decided not to join those 100 of you who are going to vote. Thank you. And here are my reasons for the most difficult and heart-rending decision that I've ever made in my entire life. The goal of this march is to break the siege of Gaza 
1,400 people died in Gaza last year at about this time. 1,400 people could be marching to Gaza today. It was a courageous decision to make, and not an easy one. Instead, she returned to the police lines and vented her anger. It was an incredibly difficult decision that I made because I wanted so desperately to go to Gaza and be with the Gazan people and let them know that I'm sending them greetings from my, the people in my community back in the United States. But on the other hand, I re also realized that by the Egyptian government saying 100 out of the almost 1,400 of us that only a hundred can go to Gaza. I knew this was a typical tactic of authoritarian governments of dividing and conquering, and I did not want to be part of, of that decision. But despite the huge personal disappointment, she still revealed her trademark humor and determination to succeed. I am going to get there if I have to go and hire someone to build an airport in Gaza so I can fly in. I tried by boat, I tried by land, maybe by air. I think I give up. Anyone want to donate money for Gaza airport? She went on to show her solidarity with the French activists who were holding a week-long occupation of the footpath outside their embassy in the Egyptian capital. And she also joined in other actions, including a legal one to stop the building of a steel wall erected to block the few tunnels to the Rafa border, which provide a lifeline to the Gazans. It is people, people like us, who bring change. Despite the setbacks and the knockbacks, Hedy Epstein is eternally optimistic. And it is this side of her character which has obviously carried her through some of the darkest moments of her life. Her love for the people of Palestine is undeniable, and her determination to do what is right by them and their children drives her forward. Her unwavering determination has earned her the respect of the most cynical activists from across the world, while reducing others to tears. When I heard her story, an 83-year-old woman, Jewish, survived the Holocaust. And she's coming on board. She's going to Gaza to stand next to my people because there's an injustice that she knows very well that has taken place. Um, I took a promise upon myself to be her guardian angel, to protect her if anything happens. But yet, Hedy, she said that she will stand in front of us to protect us. She didn't want that we parted without her, but it was an advice from the doctors. And uh, she just said, I never mind. I I can go with you. If I just die on board, you can jet me, uh, you can throw me overboard. She's an amazing symbol, one being a grandmother, an elderly woman, 85 years old, Jewish, and on top of that, a Holocaust survivor, somebody who knows the pain of uh, the uh, government oppression. And she is a, a figure that we all look up to. It's like, I want to be like Hetty when I grow up. Because of her survival, she chooses to embrace the world rather than reject the world or be afraid of the world. Happy New Year! It's New Year's Eve in the West. And as Hetty lights a candle of hope for 2010, her message is clear. I want peace and justice for everyone, but especially for the people in Gaza and in Palestine. And guess where she wants to spend next New Year? 
and next year in God, if not sooner, we can celebrate New Year the day that we can, that Gaza is open and free to the rest of the world. The people can come and go, and the Gaza people can come and go. Hedy might never get to Gaza, but nor will she ever give up trying. She agreed to share her story with you today in the hope it moves you to help the children of Palestine from the West Bank to the Gaza Strip. Now the question you must ask yourself is this. What can I do to light up the lives of these innocent children? We hope you will be inspired by her determination. And while we can't all be heady, we can follow her example. Our work is not over. You know, we can't go home and say, oh, we've done a wonderful thing, and now we're tired and we're going to rest. We cannot stop, not even tomorrow or the next day or next week, because otherwise we will lose the momentum that we have reached here where every single day we are doing something that will bring us closer to ending the siege in Gaza. Oh